Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Regeneration! Radiant's top tower is under attack. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. <laughs> Under attack. Radiance top tower has fallen. Radiance top tower has fallen. now which can actually help versus to tank like basically when they use the pipe and the crimson guard they negate completely the damage from the panda they do not uh, evade the, the i mean avoid sorry the disables the cyclone and the stun but panda's ultimate then is only a lockdown spell not a damage dealer so this is actually okay and now it's hard they found fenry in the tree line if i want to help him out good. he's watching Four star buff from Fenry, he won't get away, but that's the gem of true side being lost. Yeah. Ice 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 comes in, the double Chakrams, FY is still considering it. But they'll back up and they give the gem over to uh, to Team Secret. So what is Alchemist getting? Because he bought something and it's a uh, Maelstrom, okay, he's getting there. So, yeah, they have to do this. It has to be a farming side. They have the Alchemist, it scales really well in late game because now he has the level 4 uh, Grievals. So that's really good for them. They have the Naga, they have really good laning potential. They need to drag the game, but now this is Roshan time, and after that, it's good fight. If they can fight in the base and try to get a good fight, then the game is on again. You're, you're gonna fight up against a hard Jurassic anyway, and he's also gonna pop up from both flat oh, and yeah. now a full assault Jurassic oh, yeah. Super. It is so hard. And it's an Aegis the Immortal over on any mage. I have no idea how they do it. To be honest, everyone, I, I don't know. But if they can somehow, if there's a miracle, if there's a mistake, a good sleep into Black Hole could work. Anything. That could. But then VG Gaming willing to have at least three heroes grouped up. It's and they got so much control. Now, Koro, he's got a lot of speed, but Poppy down to two thirds of his life points already. Super just getting mal for stunned up, not allowing him to really fall. And Koro, he starts up the fire strike from F1. This guy's always on target. S4, he's got a good clean line for actually a hook shot in. And Koro, the BKB has to go. The Brumas slip will also happen. Puppy, Black what's he supposed to do right Black now? Is Black is going to come in through the rear. He jumps in already. The Razor is going to go down. Look at the burn damage into Puppy. There's a mana void. Double kill for him. Big Eddie being stunned up. This will actually be a double kill for Ice Ice Eyes as well. I don't know if there is hope left right now for Secret. S4 in the tree line. Shots up to the creep wave and away. That right now, BG Gaming just can let him go Radiance because Black he starts on the melee attack. racks. He needs the creep wave to come up. Actually, no, he doesn't. He's actually okay. He just does it himself. Mops up the creep wave on the top. He's still got the Aegis the Immortal. They did actually chase all the way up to kill off S4, but the main thing is going down is the racks. The TPs are coming back. It's actually a trip buyback. Yep. Black, he's not finished his job just yet. Radiance now he's going to bling himself away from the static link. Lost 56 points of damage. S4, the Cogs is burnt up a little bit. Ice, ice, ice. Not a lot of man to play around with. But he does have 15 bloodstone charges available. And he's denied. And there's FY. Fire strikes up. S4 with the blade now. A little bit of reflected damage. But 31 minutes and it does very little effect. And what's Kuro really meant to do? A plasma field to keep pushing the back. Dark asleep. Good sleep. Actually negated the plasma field. But who are they really going to get here? Puppy. He's got black calling. Get F1, ice, ice, ice. Super is not in range for this one. And now the sun. Now cancel on Puppy's hit. But the Cogs will fly out. But they've already got Zipper as well as Big Daddy. FY. A lot of damage on him. That sentry was revealing at his position. That's why he couldn't hide there with a the mana void from Black. And will pick up the Enigma. Super being forced after Wade. He's already got some space over on Koro. The Super. There's your blink in. 
clamps as well as the strike. And Coxon Sun's merely stalling this up. Super is flicking a moment for Black. He comes up, burns the mana off, and wow, that's a lot of damage. They've got the kill easily. A double kill for Black. He jumps in deep, a triple kill, bringing down Big Bat Daddy. And GG, VG Gaming will be our first team to go into the ESL 1 New York Grand Final. And they do it in a very convincing style. 28,000 net worth at the end of the day over on Black. He's had two phenomenal games as carry. And really, though, VG Gaming made sure it happened. Oh, VG actually stepped up their game. They look way stronger than yesterday. And yesterday, they were strong enough to actually beat Na'Vi. So that says a lot about their, their level today. FY played really a really good game. So did Super. Same for Fenrir. Ice, ice, ice. I don't, I don't even, even want to mention his timber. <laughs> so it was, it was perfect. And flawless play. here in this top lane where universe fighting up against the two different heroes without the skyrat oh, mage yeah, bottom. oh yeah he's gonna be caught out chasing him into the tower and with ppd those monster hits he's gonna be able to claim that first blood meanwhile we have bone seven chasing down fear will be able to get a return kill at least but now he's got to try and get out of this situation both two have been able to start putting a lot of pressure um, with their five man and their push, but and they incurred too many casualties in the early game. Yeah, and look at this. We now see the early pushing power capable with a Lycan plus the sustain offered to you by a Buddha Restoration from the Witch Doctor mixed in with the own sevens built here on the Legion Commander. We talked about it a couple times. The Blade Mail first versus the Blink Dagger. And which one is the better build here? In this game, it feels like there's a lot of offense coming out from Evil Geniuses and a potential a lot of five manning. So there may not be as many opportunities for pickoffs on the side of one of these pandas throwing the visage up in the air and he'll just walk himself away with the earth panda back up top lane Arteezy gets off his ultimate just before the silence could come in and should be able to run himself away with that 650 movements we know he gets caught by the duel both seven snags him and another big win for cloud nine not only it might be disaster for evil geniuses three heroes potentially going down bpd just barely surviving as the heal comes out but still the turnaround from cloud nine as evil geniuses overextend themselves and Feta drop one drop two drop three and they finish off the brewmaster the return kill from prone seven restoration and lycan is not going to take any damage because he has lifesteal as well as ac as well as bkb and just being a lycan himself so no one's actually really low after he dies oh eternal envy he's been snagged up here in this top lane and they will be able to pop him nice and quick as universe mixed in with the lycan wall is going to be dragged back there snagged by universe now the ultimate coming out from our team Two shots, but the Shadow Grave saves him. For the time being, it's going to throw the walls out. That Witch Doctor ultimate going down, but finally, it will be stopped. Both seven fighting up against two here will be dying as Die lives through all of it. And the Brewmaster ultimate also going to be cleaned up here. Trying to get the Storm Panda away should be just fine. Eternal Levy slowing down what could be a big push for Evil Geniuses after two pickoffs like that. Man, the Witch Doctor carry is real. It is very wow. real. <laughs> Even just that small amount of time with his Death Ward out, it did so much damage. And Bone Seven had the right ID. Jumped in, dueled, stopped that Death Radiance Ward as soon as possible. But he just got ripped a new one Radiance with Evil Geniuses surrounding fortified. that Witch Doctor, protecting him as much as possible and taking down the uh, the Dyer's enemy combatant. And that means Witch Doctor, attack. well, it's something small. Radiance An extra 18 damage for him. Dyer's Man, that's an easy Rex. They don't want to risk losing Bone Seven since he just uses buyback and Spectre doesn't have his haunt, although he does have buyback, so he can't really come to the fight twice, and they really don't want to lose him twice. So Roshan is probably going to be a next objective for EG, and C9 has to come up with a response to that. Panda's time to shine is pretty much uh, nearly over, I'd say, at this point. He, yes, he's played a fantastic first 25 minutes of the game, but this is when Panda starts to fall off. And I don't really know what else they have to deal with it. Like Skyrath and Dazzle, they're pretty much non factors at this point. And Legion Commander has had to duel the Witch Doctor, so he can't really do that much in terms of being able to rack up lots of damage and just control everyone else in the fight.
Well, now let's talk about the Brewmaster. You said that it is about the time he drops up. With this kind of build, with the non agonist build, I, I would say that he is in less of danger of dropping off as much. He's still going to drop off a little bit, but you look at some of his abilities, uh, that critical especially, the drunken brawler, the evasion mixed in with the critical, it can allow him to be a pretty good brawler even going into late game. Uh, do you think that they still have, uh, do you think this is still, even if we push this 50 minutes in, Cloud9 solidly have the late game, or are we seeing Evil Genius with this Witch Doctor Ultimate, is it actually enough to be able to, to add enough damage to help RTZ carry these late-game team fights? Well, it's not only that. They have to deal with Visage, too. You can't forget about his Ags with, with the Medallion on him, and then any sort of physical damage that he may be able to output is going to be mitigated by Tree and Protector Ultimate, too. He can't get damage and BKB and, like, HP, too. He can't get everything. Right. So, and then on top of that, he tried to tank Lycan, or actually LC tanked Lycan last time, but Lycan does a lot of damage now. He has heart, so you can't really kill him in a duel, and you also can't really leave him alone either. Evil Geniuses, they took that top lane of Rags and are now going to be going in for the bottom push and uh, force Cloud9. C9 to... cannot defend Roshan. Like, look at E9, uh, EG's position right now. They're just surrounding the Roshan pit. There's no way C9 can be there in like a 10 second window to stop it. Right, I mean, they take down Roshan so quickly and you know Evil Geniuses, uh, they're gonna be able to just go ahead and sit there, wait for Roshan to come up and when they see the correct opportunity, when one hero is out of position or something along those lines, they'll sneak in, do Roshan, like you said, 10 seconds flat. It's gonna require some miracle timing from Cloud9 if they hope to be able to defend that. Evil Geniuses now gonna start pushing uphill, going into that tier three tower. Artizi's gonna be on the front lines at the same time, look at what Universe is doing. He's looking for his opening jump in. Veda just backing up RTC. Now Universe shows himself looking in for the long range grab on both sides. And this could be me. Let it go, Zai. Let it go. That Agonix ripping through everyone. As it bounces around, continue to go. Eternal Levy and the rest of his crew will be able to back themselves up. Nobody dying thanks to a beautiful shallow grave from Aoi that saves the Legion Commander's life and Cloud9 successfully defend up against what should have been a great team fight for Evil geniuses. It's very funny how these team fights have developed. And no jump in, both of them hit some more. He goes for RTZ, trying to drop him as soon as possible. Look at him, he's so damn tanky. Spade lives with a shallow break, but just for a bit longer. Both of he just doesn't have the damage to finish up RTZ. Two fall, and RTZ lives. Now searching for Owie. He's going to be slowed down by Universe Plus. It's the slow from fear. That'll be enough for a third. Third takeoff, and Eternal Envy left alone against the world to be able to defend his base. I'm not sure how he's going to be able to distract them long enough to keep his tier 3 alive. Eternal Envy moving to the left. Owie's now going to join him. 9-5 actually inside of Cloud9 as Veda finds his initiation. But without the ultimate, can he actually do enough? Eternal Envy getting low. He's going to just embrace death here. Shot great, keeping him alive for a little bit longer. Veda getting low. He's going to drop a secondary time. Spectre buying back. Looking for the ultimate, but it's over. Evil geniuses are going to be taking this game one against Cloud9. Unbelievable performance there from Evil Geniuses. That was fantastic round by EG. And I think Cloud9 yeah. pretty much played the best that they could with the line that they were given, but it was just too greedy. And that has been c 9s struggle for many of their recent losses. Mm -hmm. I have to say, I mean, both you, you and I were talking about it. We felt like Cloud9 had a certain advantage. They did well enough in the laning phase and were able to make that transition where we felt pretty confident about their mid game. But Evil Geniuses, they knew what to do, man. They sat back, farmed up, got the items that they needed, and found the openings in those pick offs and those team fights. I, I have to say, the, the way they executed those team fights, like especially Universe jumping in and the what are those.